Oh, is she a mother? Oh, well, look at that. Wait, wait, wait. Are we getting a MILF? Let's go! <laughs> Subscribe, please! Alright, hi guys! Hi, hi, hi. I'm going to your live because we have the drip marketing for phase 2. No, this is 1.2. So we have drip marketing for 1.3. Uh, the first one we had, I actually didn't cover it at all, so we, we're gonna do both at the same time. So, we have had the two drip marketing for phase one and phase two of um, 1.2 of uh, Zenazon Zero. So, first of all, the first character that's been shown to us is Tsukishiro Yanagi. Uh, and she is one of the members of the Section 6, right? Uh, so she's from the same squad as, like, Sokaku, for example, and, um, uh, what's her name? Amabi? Ayane? Aya? Blah, 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 something, something. Anyway, so we've seen her in-game. She does have her model already in the game. And, uh, we're finally seeing her. Um, there is an easy way, by the way, to tell if the character is gonna be a 5-star or a 4-star. Or, like, an S rank or an A rank, even if they don't say it, is that when they do the drip marketing, if the character actually has some animation, if you see the character model moving during the drip marketing, it means that it is an S rank. If the character does not have any moving, uh, it's an A rank. So let's have a look. As you can see, you can see her body moving, the hair is moving, everything's moving. It's not moving a lot, but it's still moving. So this means S rank. Hello. Damn. Yeah, so I love her weapon. She has like a super... That's like a... Oh, crap. I, I always forgot what it's called. This is a glaive. Uh, a Nagata. She has a Nagata. Uh, so she looks absolutely great. I love the pink hair. I love her design. She has like one pauldron with like a, a one side cape. I think it looks really, really good. She has long legs. I like the skirt. It, like She looks very professional. But I do love that there's a little bit of frills like at her sleeves. I think this looks really good. Obviously, she's kind of like the supervisor of the team, if that makes any sense. Like, if she's not the team captain, but she's the one that deals with, like, uh, logistics and stuff like that. I feel like she's the one saying, like, okay... Like, she, I feel like she's the strategist, if that makes any, any sense. So she has, like, the, the ear thingy here. We can see the long weapon. It also seems like, like she's holding it here, but there's a whole other thing over there. So this makes me think maybe there's a, a thing you can activate. Um, maybe this is how she activates like the electricity inside of the, the weapon. Um, so I really like the design. I like the little bracelet here that like tightened uh, the sleeve. I think she looks really good. The belt, like she's very, like she seems very professional, right? But I also know that like, I think in the game she, she kind of likes to tease and, and make some jokes and stuff. So even though I'm sure like she can be very stern and serious in combat situation, it's like she has a, a she has work mode, and then outside of work she can be like kind of chill, uh, which I really appreciate. So we know she's a five star with the of S rank, sorry, with the way that like the model is indeed being animated here. I know it's a small detail, but it is true. Seth, for example, didn't have any amount of animations, and we know that he's A rank. Um, now, the thing that's interesting here is obviously we now know what she is. And we can see here she's electricity anomaly. So essentially, Grace is getting power crept, is what's going on. Um, so we are getting a shit ton of anomaly characters, right? We got Jane, we got um, Seth, who's a strong support for those. We got Bernice, right? And now we got Yanagi. So that's a lot of anomaly characters in a row. So this is clearly kind of like the flavor of the month that's kind of going on with the uh, universe when it comes to Zendazon Zero. They're really pushing anomaly to the forefront. Uh, the first two S ranks were Creed characters. So now they're going to anomaly. And then we'll probably get something else. And then we'll probably go back to Creed. And then we'll go back to anomaly, etc., etc. This kind of how, um, this kind of pattern that we've seen happening in like, Starwell, for example, where it's like, okay, here's some crit DPS, now here's some dot DPS, now here's some break DPS, now here's some follow-up DPS, and so you kind of go on that cycle, which means that, like, if you like the style of combat, it's gonna take longer before they're power crept, which is kind of nice. So anyway, this is still early in the game, and I think their intent is to kind of replace the standard characters, so here she's definitely gonna be the one to replace, you know, 
Grace. Uh, Grace is okay. I know a lot of people don't really like her because they feel like she takes too much on-field time to apply Anomaly and she doesn't feel like super smooth. Um, I haven't personally like built her fully or anything, so I'm not too sure. That said, Yanagi does look pretty good. I don't know. I feel like I prefer the outfits of uh, Yanagi, but Grace is so quirky and weird and so nerdy that I really, really like her. So I'm gonna have to see more of Yanagi to really decide if I like her and if I want to pull for her. The problem right now is that I can... Pr I, I hope I can get Scissor. I'm probably gonna skip Bernice. Um, because while she's fun, I, the, the flamethrower thing is not really for me. But since I really like Anomaly, if I skip Bernice, maybe I do have the chance to pick up Yanagi, right? That's the goal. That's the goal. So anyway, I think she looks great. Let's see what they say here. One day I was so hungry from working over time that I nearly passed out. But luckily, I survived to smear a lifeline and I managed to pull through. Because this lifeline was actually a donut. That was a joke. Why aren't you laughing? Wait, Zabat probably never works over time. Um, yeah, there you go. So she's a bit weird. She's a bit, uh, she's a little bit of a silly billy. So she is coming out. Here we have a little bit more information. Um, blah, 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 blah. Tsukishiro Yanagi, her special operation section six, blah, blah, blah. We can see her thingy. Um, and we have some quotes from the people in her team. Asaba, Harumasa, by the way, is the archer guy. Um, so here we have Sokaku saying, hey, Nagi, did you really buy those red bean buns today? Try to remember. Uh, okay, so the archer is saying, really can't deal with Tsukishiro. Does she not have the phrase turn a blind eye in her di dictionary? And then Miyabi. Oh, Miyabi, that's her name. Yanagi does the report really have to be written by the section chief. What even modifying this policy requires a report? Okay. And then we have a new Holo Special Operation employee who saw Yanagi's desk filled with flowers on Mother's Day. It's today deputy chief Tsukishiro's birthday. Oh, is she a mother? Oh, well, look at that. Wait, wait, wait. Are we getting a MILF? Let's go! Okay, uh, people are very excited by the fact that uh, she's getting flowers on Mother's Day. <laughs> I feel like it could be kind of a joke because I don't think they would put characters in the game that are like already married or like with child because they do want to, you know. I mean, I feel like while... Okay, maybe she has a kid. Maybe she adopted a kid. You know what I mean? Because I feel like they want to sell you the character. So if she's married and has like a husband or a wife or whatever, people are going to be like, Oh, she's already taken. Why is all your verse NTRing me? This is bullshit. So if she adopted a kid and is a single mom, people are going to love it. Because like this is a win-win situation. You know what I mean? It's a win-win situation. She's a mom and she's single and was not like soiled by a man. You know, I'm just trying to put myself in the, the place of people who are, you know, unhinged. Uh, but yeah, she looks really good. Only evil must be eradicated. What is evil? That's for us to judge. Damn, judge your real executioner, as they say. And finally here, this is the whole card. She's looking good. Joke's on you, I'm entering the NPC. Damn! <laughs> uh, here, this is the new arcade minigame, right? It's the arcade bizarre brigade. Um... It's, this is a survivor mode minigame, I'm pretty sure, uh, which is really cool. And now we have a bunch of new events, blah, 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 blah. But what is interesting here is actually lighter. I did not expect lighter to be in the next patch. And what's really interesting here is that I really thought lighter would be a four star, like an A rank agent. But you can see he is animated. Is anyone up for challenging the undefeated champion? So yeah, he... I mean, he's barely animated compared to the other characters. I mean, it doesn't have Booba. Is anyone up for challenging the undefeated champion? So it does feel like it's actually gonna be the second five star of next patch. Which is like kind of crazy. I, I really thought it would be a A rank, actually. Uh, but yeah, because I mean, I feel like while the design is kind of cool-ish, I guess. I wouldn't say this is like incredibly detailed and stuff, but I could see it. So this guy, uh, you can see he's like a gauntlet user. So like you can see like the propulsion, the propulsion things here. So I could assume like, like it's going to burst in flame and like allows him to use like incredibly powerful punches and stuff like that. No Bosch physique, true, literally unplayable. I can't pull for him. So yeah, he has that, um, I didn't, this is the first time I hear his voice in uh, English. And he's like, does anybody want to? Challenge the undefeated champion. <laughs> What's he? Like, he's such a F-boy. 
<laughs> what is that? And yeah, it's kind of funny because looking at him and hearing him talk, this really gives me vibes of Kalpas from Honkai Impact 3rd. Even though, like, even if their haircut is relatively similar, they don't have the same hair color and stuff. But yeah, I don't know why, I just think of Kalpas. Like, he seems to be like an unbridled, 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 I don't know. Like, uh, badass that just wants to, like, you know, get into fisticuffs and the such. So anyway, interestingly enough, I was talking about how it's time to power creep the standard character, and we just got a character that seems to power creep Grace, or I'm assuming the goal is going to be to power creep Grace because she has the same role and she has the same type. And here, it's similar. He's a stunner and he's fire. This is exactly the same combination that Coleta has, so I'm assuming he's going to be an upgrade to her. Personally, I really love Coleta. I think she's really cool, she's really fun, and I'm not in love with... Uh, I was going to say Luca's design. I'm not in love with Lighter's design. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't really care, to be honest. So I'm. Pr this is probably going to be a skip for me. Like, I, I don't really need stronger stunner right now um because i honestly i've got like mb cinema 6 or cinema 5 i've got coleda i'm actually satisfied with what i've got right now right uh so until i see a stun character that really strikes my fancy design wise i don't really feel the need to upgrade right away right because they're doing the job and especially with you know, more anomaly characters coming out, and I really like the playstyle of anomaly. Um, the need for stun is lesser, especially considering that Caesar is coming out, and I'm gonna pull for Caesar because Caesar, she's a defense character, she has massive buff, but also she scales off of impact, which means she can feel the role as of a stunner. So to me here, unfortunately, this is gonna be a skip. I'm gonna be perfectly happy with. Um, Caesar King. That said, yeah, the, the outfit, he, he looks like a punk. It kind of reminds me of some, like, old anime character, especially with the scarf. You know, it, it's like that look. Like, if he had long hair, you know, I could see it more. Like, to me, this is like 80s, 90s Japanese animation stuff. This is like, um, oh, what's his name? I don't know, it, it kind of gives me vibe. Even though they don't look similar, it gives me vibes of the, ah, oh, what was his name? The guy that, like, the pilot, the captain of a spaceship or something. I, uh, da, 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 I don't remember. Anyway, uh, that that's from a super long time ago. And I remember, like, my father telling me about it. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, like, it, it gives me very old school vibes. Uh, but yeah, the leather jacket is ripped. You can see it, the gloves. Like, he, he kind of has that, like, I'm too cool for school attitude going on. I think, like, the spikes, there's a lot of spikes. I don't know if I care that much about all the spikes, to be honest. Like, even his pockets and spikes, it's like, come on. <laughs> but, I mean, I understand. If you like yourself a leather daddy, he's gonna be for you, for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, so, yeah, he seems to be... Is anyone up for challenging undefeated champions? Uh, you may not have the skill to defeat me, but you could could you not bleed so much? Oh my god. I know fainting at the sight of blood isn't very impressive for the champion. Or is this your way of bringing us both down? Oh, so he's like, uh, hemophobic? I think it's called hemophobic. Or hemophobi. So apparently hemophobi is all- oh wait, this is French. Ah! Uh, so... I don't know what it's called in English. But yeah, essentially he has a fear of blood. Yeah, he passes out if he sees blood. Interesting. So that's like uh, his cute quality, I guess. Uh, Luciana, so that's Lucy. I mean, there's no one he can beat. He can't beat, but it's not because I've lost to him. Uh, Luciana has always been the tsundere. Big Daddy, overwhelming force can solve many problems in the outer ring, but not all of them. A fighter from the outer ring says, a nominous red scarf, just as eye catching as the river says. Even with that cheers and applause, he's still a true champion from a retired mercenary. So yeah, it, it just seems to be like a super big badass with kind of a, a cute quirk that he's scared of blood. Um, so yeah, that kind of, I can definitely see that. It's like the, the bad boy with the soft side. Um, and that's definitely a type, right? So I, I definitely understand if, like, people are super into that. It's just not for me. Also, I'm, like, struggling in terms of resources because I love Jane so much, I pull for her weapon, right? So it's gonna be too, too, too rough for me. So yeah, that's my thoughts on the two characters. 
personally speaking, who is going to be most important, most interesting uh, between the two? It's really hard to say because right now we don't really have their kid at all, right? We just have their... We just know their roles. So I would say if you're not super into the... If you prefer, like, big character with just creep DPS, um, I think you can probably Yanagi just skip her. If you don't really like the anomaly stuff, if you skip, like... Characters like Jane, if their gameplay don't interest you, interest you, you can definitely skip. I also think that when you play uh, Disorder, if you play Anomaly, you generally need to have multiple Anomaly characters. So if you haven't built one and you don't intend to build one, this probably can be a skip for you. You probably don't need to. That said, there are some good characters for Anomaly. There are some good a rank characters for her because... Um, she's electric, she's normally, she's gonna work perfectly with Seth, they're both electric, and then you can have another strong solo applier, you could probably go with Bernie, or so something like that, and that's gonna work super good, uh, so yeah, that's an option. Now, for him, um, I think him is a bit harder to really, like, I feel like you pull for him if you don't have two stunner, essentially. If you don't have Koleda, if you don't have Lycon, if you don't have Chin Yi, if you don't have those characters and you're struggling, I feel like you can probably go for him. If you're struggling and you like crit DPS, he might be a good idea, right? Like if you have MB and no other standard stun character and you didn't pull for Shin Yi, this might be the time where you might want to actually dip uh, some resources into getting him. Because that way you have two stunner. You have like Ambi, who's obviously free to play, and she does the job fine, and then you have him. Or if you have Call It Out, like her, or something like that, but you feel like your MB is kind of letting you down, this is when you can pick him up. And obviously, he's gonna work super well with other Sons of Kalidon, that we are getting so many of those characters. And uh, so, yeah, just uh, let me know who you prefer, who you're gonna be pulling for, and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Cheers!